to this fascinating and complex world of the UN and rule making. The United Nations came into being after the Second World War for the specific purpose of maintaining peace and avoiding the scourges of war. The new countries, developing countries, had come to claim the right to both political and economic independence, seeking to change the rules of the game. And we began to put on the table their issues, their demands for a new world. And of course, as in the past, the, the, the developed countries, the former colonial countries, were there to defend their, and to, uh, their rights that, that they had uh, in the past. And they went after each of these countries and defeated their proposals for change. It was then that Julius Nyerere, who became the president of Tanzania, picked up a pencil and went like that. If they take us one by one, they'll break us. But if we stand together, they can never break us. That was the beginning of how the group of 77 came together in Geneva. Well, the group of 77 and its method of work was criticized uh, viciously. Um, it is a slow process uh, because it has uh, to take into account multi years of coordination. The group of Central is made of, of Asia, Africa, Latin America, these developed land of countries. They all meet and they coordinate until they come to one voice. We saw a change in the, in the camp of the developed countries with the EU coming on board as, one, as another group almost. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, and the, the system is set for, but there was changing in the methods of work and the efficiency of how the system works. Um, to give you one example, in the past there was no informal meetings. Uh, with the changes, informality came in, it allowed for more free dialogue uh, uh, to take place. And there was also this idea to bring together the, this, the two different groups to solve problems uh, more easily. And the co-sharing of uh, the meetings came into being, where someone from developed countries and someone from developing both co-chair the meetings. That's how we made progress in the uh, working group, of the adult working group on areas beyond national jurisdiction. Um, I think this how we made progress on the sustainable development goals. So the system will uh, continue because it is the only method that we have to bring together voices uh, 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 into uh, 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 a cluster of voices and different ideas into a single agree uh, uh, one voice. And that is the, the means to reach, uh, to help us to reach agreements. Agros gave us the framework that uh, allowed us to move even further, because uh, uh, UNCLOS was also uh, made a major contribution to the, the, the new international economic order, and as we saw later to Agenda 21, when we had the, the Earth Summit. And if you go back to the Earth Summit, you, you find um, a major part of the language was the language of UNCLOS that was agreed on conservation, on environment, etc. So UNCLOS uh, influence was beyond, beyond the issue of managing uh, uh, or governing uh, our, our resources. But with time, with technology, uh, with knowledge, as we, as we entered 
the new millennium, we found that there are issues that remain unresolved from UNCLOS. And that is basically the issues of governance in areas beyond national jurisdiction. And for that, for that, we, a new process has been in the making. And this process is now to complement UNCLOS with, a, with an implementation agreement that would govern these areas beyond national jurisdiction and help us to make UNCLOS relevant to the new discoveries, to the new sciences, and also for the protection of marine biodiversity, marine genetic resources, uh, benefit sharing. These are critical issues that we need to face for the future. We started the process in the United Nations back in, in 2004. In, in this year, 2015, the General Assembly approved the new process is, and that is to have a conference for an implementation agreement that under UNCLOS on areas beyond national jurisdiction. So we have much to be hopeful for in the future. We have seen it is possible to come to agreement, although it takes a long time, to make UNCLOS remain relevant and to make global governance of the ocean, all the ocean, including the area beyond national jurisdiction possible. And at the same time, we had this unbelievable expectation of adopting a standalone su sustainable goal for the, for the ocean under the SDGs, the, the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, these two, will give us, hopefully, will give also our children and grandchildren the possibility to live in a livable planet. UNCLOS is the beginning, and the duty now is to complete it.